Well, good morning. There it is. Good morning to you all. This install guide will be in English because uh, I did this for the Rune Facebook group and I announced it uh, over there. Let me see if the sound works, by the way. Let me know if the sound is good. It's quite the setup <laughs> I made today. <laughs> yeah. I made it today. It, it works. Okay, that's good. Um, it's one minute to ten. Uh, it's quite the setup I made today, so there will be going stuff very, very wrong, I guess. I have my PC over here. As you can see here, uh, then there is the doorbell. Let me check. It is live, as you can see. It's a ring doorbell, so I can see who's on the. Oh, that's for me. But I hope the neighbors will pick it up. Um, it's quite a setup I made today. I have the PC in front of me that streams to Facebook, then I have a server in the server room that streams to YouTube to you. Then I have screen sharing here, a capture card and my laptop. So I have to switch between four or five sources and then there's two cameras and two microphones but I hope it all goes well. The reason I did this setup is that I need to show a lot of stuff. I'm sorry for the doorbell but uh, I have stuff today in the office and I'm going on a holiday tomorrow. Um, so let me see if the sound is okay. Uh, I guess it is. I won't be talking this loud because I don't need to and otherwise the microphone will clip. But okay, today we're gonna do a Rune Rock install. And uh, it's not that complicated to be honest. I see a lot of questions online. Uh, about does this PC work, does that PC work, uh, yeah they work as long as it's a computer with an x86 chip inside it will work. Um, oh yeah I see some questions uh, let me uh, yeah let, let's start with explaining the, uh, the uh, abbreviations like NUC. Okay a NUC is a new uh, uh, a next unit computing, uh, a next unit computer. It's it's made by Intel. Uh, yeah, next unit of computing. I had to look it up. Um, it's made by Intel. It's a very small platform. It's very energy efficient, but it's still quite powerful. That that's the whole point of a NUC. So a NUC is just a very small energy efficient computer. It is an Intel chip, it is the same chip set, so it could be an i3 or an i5 or an i7 or a Celeron or a Pentium. And if you look at the hierarchy, uh, you have Pentium and Celeron. Those are not very powerful, but they're powerful enough, to be honest. I have a Celeron J1900, I think. It's a quad-core, it's a dual-core, hyper-threaded. But um, that is powerful enough to run as a rune core. The i3, i5, i7 are more powerful, of course. The i3 is mostly dual-core. The i5 is sometimes quad-core. The i7 can be more, but not in a NUC, I think. Maybe hexa-core, so it's six cores. Uh, I, I did some IT journalism in my days, but it's been eight years ago, so I'm not really, really into the new uh, lineups made by Intel, especially the U units um, that are energy efficient, because Intel is not very straightforward anymore uh, concerning CPU numbers. Uh, AMD is a lot more clear in that in that case, in that perspective. But um, let's say you need a rune core for your home with two or three zones, then an i3 is enough. Uh, I ran my rune core on a NAS, so it does a lot of other stuff, and it still worked perfectly fine. So. Please don't be afraid that your computer is not powerful enough to run the, to run the Rune Core. 
If there are any questions regarding hardware you can ask me, uh, I, uh, I can answer a lot of questions regarding that because I use RuneCore on a lot of stuff. Uh, I did it on an AMD. My RuneCore now is running on an AMD. It r runs fine, it's very stable, it's very responsive, it just r runs fine. It's a Ryzen 3 I think, it's a 3400 Ryzen 3 and it runs perfectly fine. So. Don't be afraid. Um, Robin says uh, an SSD is uh, a lot of uh, is a lot faster. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will get into that, by the way. Um, so this today, uh, let me switch to the other camera. Uh, the switching won't be as um, smooth as in the multi test, but that's because I'm alone and I have a lot of stuff to. Uh, to control. Um, this is our rune core. It's a gigabyte uh, NUC made by Intel, of course. Uh, let me get that out. Uh, then you can see this NUC. It's a gigabyte. Uh, it's a gigabyte NUC. It's an i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM and an SSD, of course. You can mount it on the back of your screen if you like. Um, it's an i5-4200, so it's not the newest, but it's fine. It, it, it's, it's fast enough, it's, it's powerful enough to run the Rune Core. Um, this we will install today. Oh, sorry about that. This is the one. Um, this we will install today, and uh, I will start at the beginning. So we have the hardware, that's the Gigabyte uh, bricks. They call it bricks, NUC stuff. And you need to connect it to ethernet, of course. So let me show you how you do that. Let me do that. Uh, let me see, I need this camera for that, okay. You need to connect it to ethernet. I strongly advise you to use a cable, especially for the NUC, because it uh, has to serve all the zones, uh, so all the endpoints. In this case, we plug in the uh, screen, because we need to do some stuff on screen. Of course, you need to use power, so we put it in there. Then, you need a USB stick to get the image on the Gigabyte NUC. The reason is you need an install medium and uh, USB is the, f is the easiest way to go. So we make a USB stick now. Uh, let me show you how you do that. I'm going to share my laptop. Uh, I hope you still hear me. Yeah, you still hear me. That's good. We plug in the USB stick. Let me shut down this one. Um, and of course it says I don't see anything on the USB stick. I do it with Windows this time. So uh, let me... Uh, this one. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, better to look at. So let's go to Chrome. Then we go to uh, Rune Rock Install. This is the install guide made by Rune himself, uh, by Rune, the company itself. It, it explains some stuff about the hardware. Um, we have a 64, no, a one, 128 gigabyte SSD in there, and it's it's big enough. Uh, there is no issue. I, I think you could even use uh, 32, but maybe they don't support it. I didn't try because smaller than 64 is hard to get and it doesn't cost anything so the the price of ssds especially m.2 is uh, uh m.2 sata we don't uh, even have an nvme in there because it didn't even exist so we have an m.2 sata ssd in there and they're cheap it, it, it's not expensive you don't need a very expensive ssd we'll get into that later um then you need to prepare your BIOS. We'll do that. Uh, we'll do that uh, uh, later on. We need to download 
the image. So we click on the link. Uh, let me show you. There's a. Oh, sorry about that. You see that point three is download. We download the image. So then you need to install the image on the USB stick. So you need some software to get the image on the USB stick. We use Etcher as well. Etcher is very, very convenient. It, it's good software. Uh, we don't use uh, Linux, so we use Windows in this case. And we already have Etcher. This is a tricky one because you need to uh, get into the rune NUC. Uh, it has a shared folder, but sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, but let's hope it works today because I had an issue on a rune install where I couldn't get into the folder and it was a lot of tricky stuff to get the codex in the right mm, folder. Okay, so we have the rune image. We have... Uh, Oh, I still need to install Etcher. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, let's get there, download it, well, and get there. Etcher is very, uh, very good software. I, I love it. It's uh, it's quick, it's easy, it's foolproof, so it's it works like a charm. Um, it has to download uh, 127 megabytes, so it's will we'll be finished in 20 seconds um, if you have any questions regarding hardware just let me know um, I see some people on Facebook I warn you that the quality on YouTube is a lot better and the chat will be more active so you uh, we do it on two platforms for your convenience but I advise you to go to YouTube because it's uh, just better quality um, it's downloaded so I'll go back to this one um, let's open the image and now it installs Etcher okay done I'm gonna use a file and I select the file I just downloaded so that's this one then I need a target and it almost always automatically detects the right uh, USB drive because most of the time there's only one so now and then we go flashing yes I uh, now it deflates the file and it installs it on the USB stick the funny thing is it this takes a while the the cool thing is uh, it makes two partitions uh, so it is it, it I almost never see that um, it is a, a, a Linux uh, distribution of course rune rock is Linux and that maybe that's why it's so stable uh, uh, I use rune with Windows as well but it's not as stable as uh, a Linux distribution it, that's just a fact most of the time it works and it works flawlessly and I think it even uh, supports bigger libraries in Windows but I'm not very sure it's almost finished already <coughs> that's the beauty of fast computing today um, let me talk about SSDs for a short while uh, you have uh, two types of disks let me show you focus yeah so this is a mechanical hard drive and it has a spinning plate uh, as you can see it's just some sort of glass I think with a, a layer on top that can be magnetized so this is what how the old hard drives worked you have a, a head that can read and write it will uh, ooh now I really crashed it <laughs> It can read and write and it needs to be uh, on the platter. So this part, let me see if it works. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. Okay. Will look for the right sector 
on the disk. You need to format the drive to 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 be able to use it. It will uh, uh, distribute all the sectors and say this is the block size and and stuff like that. It's very complicated, and I'm not a technician, but I just know that you need to format it. But the of course the rotating platters, they spin either at uh, 5400 or sometimes a little bit faster like 5700 rpm some drives and most of the desktop drives will spin at 7200 rpm and then you have the server drives that go beyond 10,000 rpm the faster it spins the faster it will be and it can search faster because the platter spins faster but still you will be looking at Nah, six seven milliseconds and that's slow in terms of computing it's very slow in terms of computing that's why SSDs are a lot quicker and this is an M.2 SATA SSD that's even a slow one this is from one of my PFSense uh, routers um, they are so much quicker because searching for stuff on a NAND flash chip is just a lot quicker it's one hundredth of a millisecond so it is a thousand times quicker than most of the mechanical drives if you have to search for stuff raw throughput is not even that important if you are working in a database so that's why rune advises because it's mostly database searching uh, as soon as the stream starts it's not it doesn't need to be very fast uh, that's why Rune advises to use an SSD because the searching will be instant instead of searching for the right track in the database and even if you especially if you integrate Tidal or Rune uh, uh, Tidal or Cobus it will be uh, very intensive in search in terms of searching for stuff okay the flash is complete uh, let me show you it is complete because now you see it's it's completed then we can pull out the USB stick and we can go put it in the NUC so it is important that you have a display and that you have a keyboard especially for the first time now don't be uh, a fool and just boot it up because most of the NUX will be in and uh, in in a, a, a different mode you need to put it the BIOS in legacy mode so now I'll be uh, on the capture card and I'm still online oops sorry about that I need to reboot and go in the BIOS and I hope you can still hear me now we're in the BIOS well if you if you look in the BIOS uh, you need to go oops, to advanced you can see the CPU configuration you don't need to do a lot of stuff in here but I'll sh just show you um, what is important see there is a, uh, a 128 gigabyte uh, SSD in there say the mode is best in AHCI rapid start is disabled in my case because um, I don't need it this is temperature sensing and fan control I advise you to use it because if it's in your uh, electrical room uh, and there's something wrong uh, you'll be able to hear it uh, network stack please disable it because uh, otherwise it could boot from the network and you don't want that onboard audio is disabled in my case because I don't use it uh, I either put in uh, uh, an external deck and most of the time I just use it as a server and not as a uh, player you can use it as a player but the onboard audio is just crap so don't use it uh, this is energy efficiency uh, I enabled it because if it's uh, well in some sort of suspense state it will use a very little energy I of course you need the onboard LAN uh, 
DRAM, yeah, it's 1600 megahertz in my case, so I just put it on 1600. Okay, well, boot option one should be your SSD. But in this case, I put it on generic and this one on the second, because I need to boot from the USB drive. Then, uh, secure boot is disabled in my case. Please disable it if yours is enabled. It could, you could get issues with booting from USB. So, oh, uh, I need to get back. Uh, well, this is the right settings. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, oh. Wait, yeah, that should be generic. Okay, yeah, now we can boot. Oh, it's still booted from the hard drive. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I, I'll try to do it manually in this case. Okay. Boot. Okay. I just disabled this one. Set. You see, this is always the hard part, because it doesn't want to, uh, it doesn't want to boot from the, from the USB drive. Boot overrides, yes, please. Save and exit. Ah, come on. Just boot, you fool. Ah, oh, come on. <sighs> I, st I tested it yesterday. <laughs> I guess you're all laughing now and uh, <laughs> Let me switch it off and on. It always works. Maybe I need to make another USB stick. I'll just create a second one. Flash another. Oh. Remove. Yeah, select. All right, what helps sometimes in this case is uh, restore all the defaults and uh, because it doesn't need to be in UA UEFI mode, that's the whole point. And you need to get it off UEFI and um, yeah. Uh, Uh, that's good. It doesn't need to be in raid mode. That's also good. That's also good. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Yes. Also correct. Uh, you need to get there. Secure boot should be disabled standard boot okay save
Ah, crap. You see, this is exactly where stuff can go wrong. Yeah, class, I'm trying. It doesn't want my stick. I'm creating a new one. I had issues with PFSense once with a USB stick that just didn't want to boot. And uh, I created, oops, sorry about that. Uh, I created a new one and uh, it, it, it worked, but it's, 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 it's very stubborn sometimes. I don't know why. Maybe I need to screw it open and format the uh, Plextor drive. Um, this is when it's live. I tested it yesterday and it worked. <laughs> it's the whole stupid part. Um, let me try another USB stick. But you are right. You can boot manually. And it works uh, better that way. Let me say, see if the capture card is already, uh, it's powered down now. All right. We're back in the BIOS again. Uh, boot. You see, this is the whole. You, uh, it's still UEFI, and that's that's the whole uh, stupid thing that doesn't work. It needs to get off UEFI. Boot overrides. See, it doesn't want to. Why? Mm, uh, let me check one thing. You can press F12. Uh, okay. Okay. Ha! Ah, finally. Thank you, class. Uh, yeah, Robin, uh, it was on. You can press F12. Whew! Finally. So it's really hard to get um, the bricks booting with uh, the USB key. But if you do it manually and press F12, like Klaas already said, it works. Uh, okay, I want to install it, so I press 1. I don't know why it, did, why it worked yesterday then. Uh, I need to install it on my first drive. That's a 128 GB Plex Store. And yes, I want to do this. Uh, okay, but as you can see, um, in the BIOS I didn't have the option to choose for legacy boot. You need to, in, to, to configure legacy boot, otherwise it just won't start. UEFI is not compatible with Linux, as most of the time it isn't. And this, this device didn't give me the option to override it. Oh, sorry about the second mic. It, it echoes. Um, Robin says, yeah, another brand. I had some USB sticks that were broken. They just didn't boot and it, it's hard. Um, yes, Steven on Facebook says your USB drive is not recognized. It was recognized, but it was recognized wrongly. That, that's the whole stupid thing. But it, it's installing now. 
So you can override the boot with F12 in case of a gigabyte brick. Sometimes it's F10 and sometimes it's a tap or something. It, 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 it's brand dependent. Um, but as you can see, ev even I got it running now. Um, let's get back to the capture card. So this is the whole installation part. To summarize, you need a rune knock, and it can be any knock. It doesn't matter. This one is six years old or something. And um, it's got an M2 SATA SSD drive. It's fast enough for rune core. Um, I even installed it on an AMD and it worked. So that's not a problem. I don't know why Facebook is going offline now. Let's check if it's back online again. No. Nope. Facebook kicked me out. Let's see if uh, you can check here. Okay. Um. Okay, that's really stupid. It's uh, Facebook is gone offline. I don't know why. Yeah. But I'm still online here, I hope. Yeah, it's still going there. Yeah, that's the whole thing with loads and loads of servers. And uh, let me see. Oh. Uh, I'll be back in a sec. I'm terribly sorry for this interruption. Okay. It's weird. Okay, start. Okay, back again. Um, uh, so, to summarize, you need a, a rune knock and you need uh, a USB stick. That's it. A knock, most of the time, by the way, is uh, a bare bone so you need memory and you need an ssd to put it in there so most of, most of the time ssds like this are cheap uh, memory is not really cheap but it's affordable and you can buy uh, ddr3 l or ddr4 l the l is part is important because it's low voltage and you need you need low voltage so okay we're back now we have the room core installed let's see if we can log in you you need a, a login by the way otherwise it won't work uh, i'm gonna put my laptop on there and let's see if i can get into rune i am over here i will log out because this is my uh, office rune i'm gonna log out and I'm gonna check, uh, this is on the, ah, I'm on the wrong network. I'll log in on the Wi-Fi. Uh, that's also a thing, by the way. I often see people that are, have two routers in their office. So, suppose this is your provider modem router and you have a subscription with a provider. And this is the modem router. Most of the time these are crap and uh, they put another router 
behind it. So they buy their own stuff, they put it behind it, and they have a cable between the two. So you have the LAN connection to the internet connection of your second one. And it works, but the Wi-Fi is still on on this one, and the Wi-Fi is still on on this one. Now that's an issue, because if you have your tablet or phone connected to the provider router, and your room core is connected to your own router, then you're in two separate networks, like I was. Then you won't see your new room core, because you're on a separate network. Please keep that in mind. If you use your own router, disable the Wi-Fi of this one and use it only for your internet connection. Never ever connect stuff to your provider router if you have your own one. It won't work. So, I have my laptop connected. Um, this is the new Rune NUC. So I'm gonna connect and I'm gonna use my login. Okay, well, this is the setup um, to, to get the library running. Oh, class, uh, I'm using a Gigabyte Bricks, as you can see here. It's a Gigabyte Bricks with an i5. Um, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to add a folder and I'm going to use my um, NAS drive as a source for all the files. So I'm going to add a network share and the IP address of my uh, NAS drive is 1.2.168.2.230. my f music folder is in music then you of course need to put in your credentials and I don't use a work group so I don't need to fill in that part oh my god Uh, maybe like this yeah that's stupid <laughs> I don't know why uh, then I'm gonna use the flag folder because it's uh, I don't need all the other crap like a royalty free music and mp3s I don't listen to okay well then we're gonna continue I'm not gonna scan the title library in this one because I only have one login uh, I'm going to say no thanks. Now this is an interesting part. Uh, I'm going to... I'm not going to connect all this stuff. Um, because I'm... It scans the whole network for... Okay, let me put this cam on. Rune scans your whole network when it's a server. I opened uh, Rune on my desktop. Oh, go back. Connect. I, I have Rune running on my working computer. So it sees all the stuff like the cobalt and all the audio outputs on that one. You can add those in your room core. That's pretty awesome, but in this case it's not very convenient because I don't want to use it now. Um, I'm gonna plug in this Dragonfly Red and see what happens. I'm curious if it will recognize it really quickly. No, not yet. I'm gonna add it later and that's, that's even better. Um, Oh yeah, it did. Wow, that's really quick. 
You see? It, it's in there. So, I'm gonna enable the Dragonfly. You can connect USB decks directly to your core. That, that's possible. And it's, it's already um, configured because it's Rune certified. So, you can add stuff later. I'm gonna update this to, uh, to the latest version. I downloaded it yesterday, so I don't know why it needs to be updated now. Um, and as you can see, it, it scans the library pretty quickly, but that's because it's an i5 and my NAS uh, is using as uh, a 10 gigabit network card, so it's very, very quick. Okay. So, are there any questions up till now? We installed the software on a USB drive. Then we used the USB drive to install it on the NUC. That didn't go flawlessly, but it eventually it worked. Um, I think the major default, the, the major defect in this case was that I couldn't get the BIOS to legacy mode all the way. It still used UE UEFI and it doesn't boot when it uses UEFI. So that, that's a major bummer, but with a boot override like uh, uh, class, I think, said, uh, well, yeah, class said it worked eventually, that, so that's a good, good piece of advice. When it was installed, you can boot, uh, you can install Rune, it was already installed on my laptop, but you can download Rune for Windows or Rune for Mac and log in to your Rune core. And then you can add your library. So it's, it's not that hard. Uh, I'm gonna show you some other stuff now. Uh, let me see if I can share this. Yeah. Oh. Well, we're on the computer now. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> if you have your uh, Rune installed, now I can use Rune here. It starts. And you see here it's Rune Optimized Kit. I can connect to it and uh, you can see it's still scanning. Now, suppose you have um, another core, or sorry, another source you want to add. You can go to settings, you can go to audio, and you can add everything you like. Uh, I can even name the stuff that's connected to my core, like Dragonfly. Okay. There are no other sources in the network now. <coughs> because um, I'm on a different network. But you can see I can enable another source and say this is my working PC. If you want to tweak it, you can go to device setup and say, yeah, it's a private zone. And uh, then it will be isolated from the rest. You can't combine the, so the, the, the zones that are private. Uh, yeah, I, I advise you to use exclusive mode because then other software on the uh, on the computer can't interrupt your music. So that's that's very important. Um, it is a decoder and a renderer, so I don't know why it's um, it's on decoder only. You can use the device volume, or you can set it fixed, uh, or you can even use DSP volume. So that's all all great. And now you can go to select an audio zone and I can go to my working PC and I can play music. So, works. Hey. Wow. Oops. Ah, Facebook is still, still doing very weird stuff. Okay. So, that's um let's see if i'm back <laughs> streaming to two networks is uh, is really hard it, it's horrible man facebook is really not stable at all okay 
let's see if I can get it up and running again. So no questions. Uh, oh yeah, we're back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So this is the whole room part. If you want to navigate um, through your room stuff, you can still let me see. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show you yeah okay if you want to navigate through your library uh, you can uh, go to an overview that's what you edit and what you uh, uh, is what's what rune advises you to to play let's say like that um, of course this will be generated um, dynamically that's the word i was looking for um, or you can just go to your artists or to you your tracks or to your uh, albums i mostly use album view by the way it's it's just better okay it's not even close to everything i have but it's uh, still scanning as you can see um, if you go to focus that's a really fun part you can see what is in your library and uh, what music you mostly like. I'm uh, definitely a kid from the 2000s and on, <laughs> but I have some old stuff in there as well. So I'm gonna go to this one and I'm gonna go to my other OBS and say, go back to NDI input, okay. Well, um, we did the USB drive, we did the install, we did the uh, library management, we did, we added some zones. Um, are there any questions regarding the installation of a Rune NUC? I can prove that it works on an AMD uh, if you like, or if you um, want so to know some other stuff, fine with me. Otherwise. I think I'm finished, uh, we're into almost an hour. It is not really hard to install a Rune, NUC, um, a Rune Rock NUC system, so I guess um, this is it. I'm sorry for the glitches, it's mostly Facebook that is uh, really, really giving me some headaches. It's, it's not stable at all, it's weird. Um, I'm done, I think. Yeah, so thank you for tuning in. It was a short and to the point uh, tutorial, I guess. So thank you for watching and see you later.